What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're talking recovery days today. Uh, they're extremely important, but I look around and I watch so many people that doing them incorrectly, uh, literally getting worse by doing their recovery days. So I wanna get through this whole thing with you guys and make sure you understand what is the point of a recovery day, how do you do it properly, uh, and how you can use it to actually benefit you instead of hurting you like the vast majority of people who use them currently. So the first thing that we're gonna need to talk about is the strength recovery adaptation graph. That's what we're looking at. So on the bottom here, we've got time, and then on the side, we've got performance. So how this graph works, this dashed line is basically your baseline for performance. Um, right here, you're just running at baseline because you haven't done anything. Then you perform some sort of training, uh, exercise or stimulus, you apply a stimulus here, uh, and you're gonna get worse immediately at whatever you're training for, right? That's just how it works. Training works by breaking down whatever you're doing. So if this is like a bench press, uh, you bench a whole lot uh, in whatever strategy is gonna get you the adaptation you want. And then the next few days you get worse at doing whatever you're doing. Just how it works. Now, once you're down here, then you then have to recover uh, and that's how you recover uh, to get back over the line. So uh, things like sleeping, eating, uh, your body's gonna rearrange building blocks you'll get better neurologically, do a whole bunch of stuff uh, on the actual recovery process to get you back um, to baseline and then finally above it. Now this is your adaptation. So how this whole thing works, you apply a stimulus, you recover from the stimulus, and then you build your adaptation and then you're better, right? That's how training works. And then you do this over and over and over. And over a long period of time, you can get significantly better, better at whatever you're training for. Honing in on the recovery day part, they're gonna be happening in this part of the graph, right? We already said this is where you'll be recovering. This is where your recovery days are going to be happening. Now, the whole point of a recovery day is just to get a little bit of blood flow going, uh, get things moving around. And the whole point of that is when you exercised, uh, the structures that were stressed created waste and then they need to get that waste removed and then they need to get new nutrients in so they can build and uh, create adaptations. So that's what you're doing during this period of time. You're getting rid of the muscle uh, and structure waste. You're putting in new nutrients so that it can build. Now, the problem here becomes when people take their recovery days at too high of an intensity. And what ends up happening is instead of just doing something that's advantageous for bringing in new nutrients and getting rid of waste, they actually apply another training stimulus because they went too hard uh, during that day. Instead of this graph ending up looking like this, what happens is they end up, at this point, you should be applying uh, just recovery, right? And what they end up doing is actually taking themselves further down and applying another training stimulus. Now, what that's gonna do is that's gonna take you further and further and further away from your baseline. So you're gonna get worse and worse and worse and worse. So I get a lot of questions about, um, well, hey, my velo is really far down in a velo program. Is that normal? Yeah, it's normal, but it's not good. That means you're doing this. You're not giving yourself enough time to actually recover and uh, spacing things out correctly. So, but back to the point, uh, in recovery days, if you continue to push yourself lower and lower and lower and lower, not only are you taking yourself deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper uh, under your baseline, you're basically ruining the stimulus that you just uh, gave your body. So you push your body to the limit, made this huge stimulus to then recover from to then build your adaptation. But instead of recovering and building your adaptation, you just applied another stimulus. So you keep going down, 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 down. Now you're gonna eventually at some point, uh, you're gonna get so far down here in performance that you're gonna feel like absolute crap. You're not gonna be able to perform. You're gonna take this long deload and eventually over a long period of time, you'll start back here at baseline. Maybe you might create a tiny bit of an adaptation, but nowhere near the adaptation that could be created uh, if you use this correctly over time and actually gave yourself the amount of time necessary to recover from the first stimulus you applied. I look around at a bunch of different content on social media and it's really, really common to see guys uh, take these recovery days way too high of an intensity. So it just ruins the recovery and the ultimate adaptation that they should be getting from their higher intensity day. 
and they trade it off for literally nothing. Like you should just be recovering and they just do some low intensity work that doesn't actually get them better at anything, but it's high enough intensity to inhibit their recovery. So there's really no upside. There's just a major downside, which is you just don't get any better. And you follow that over time and their 100% intensity days, because they're under recovered, end up being lower velocity. So they end up really being like 90% output, but it takes 100% effort, which then ends up affecting the quality of the training stimulus you can get. If you could throw 95 on a high intensity day and you actually are only prepared to throw 92, that's not as good of a training stimulus as it could have been if you would have thrown 95. So I think you guys can see they have this, there's so many, it's very common for guys just to have this huge downward spiral where they end up putting too much intensity on the days where they shouldn't be putting much intensity. And then that puts them into a position where they can't put enough intensity and enough effort into the days where they should be putting 100% intensity. And it just stalls their training program, they end up feeling like crap, and they don't get any better. So what is the fix here? And the fix is to treat your recovery days like you would treat walking. Now, what I mean by that is if you trained as a sprinter, uh, imagine the difference here between sprinting and between walking. So some of your training days are gonna be sprinting, some are gonna be jogging, and some are going to be walking. Now these recovery days, it should, be, it should embody the idea of walking compared to sprinting within the throw. So you're not going to be able to have the same exact mechanics as you would at a high intensity throw. You're not going to be able to put the same amount of intensity and same amount of momentum into it. Honestly, you're not gonna be able to practice the full pitching motion. There's just gonna be too much energy in the system. So the whole point here, take your recovery days like you would take a nice little relaxing walk, uh, maybe with the family, just picture that. Have Understand that as the picture. This nice relaxing walk uh, with really no intention of breaking anything down. And take that mindset and apply that to your throws within your recovery day. I can't stress enough, the point of a recovery day is to get rid of the waste from the structures that you trained and to bring in new nutrients. It is absolutely not to stress the uh, structures so much to where you're sore the next day or it inhibits the training stimulus that you had applied earlier. That's super important, guys. If you can get this down, you can drastically increase the effectiveness of your programs. Programming is so much about apply the right stimulus at the right time, recover at the right time, to then apply the right stimulus again at the right time. All right, guys, well, hopefully after watching this video, you have a much better idea of what mindset and, and how to approach your recovery days. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll get back to them. Hope you guys enjoyed the video.